Hello everyone, this is Nathan Rourke with another survival video. Today I thought it'd be real important for us to uh, cover another very basic skill living outside or living in any crisis situation and that is the ability to boil water. There's lots of different ways to boil water. It always depends upon the tools you have at hand and the resources you have available to you. Today I wanted to introduce my favorite way of boiling water in a backcountry situation and it's called the fire crane. And as you can see, I have set up before me our most basic fire crane and it's a simple machine. It's a lever. So you can see I have a stout stick. On one end of the stout stick is a pot full of water suspended over fire. It rests in the middle on a fulcrum point and on the far side of that stick is a counterweight that holds up our pot full of water. This is an important setup. It's super easy to make if you have the resources at hand. Um, you know, it, it's got to be stable. Anytime we're talking about boiling water, we also need to take in consideration the safety elements around boiling water because boiling water in a survival situation or even on a family campout can create uh, a lot of injury. Uh, could turn a survival situation into a very deadly situation. A spill of boiling water onto skin uh, opens up all kinds of issues. Dehydration, to name very few, dehydration, infection, a lot of pain. Um, so in the backcountry, when I'm leading my trips, if, if we have a serious boiling water incident on skin, oftentimes it's an evacuation situation. Uh, and that's a whole other subject of first aid and, and, and burn management. But just know that when you set this up, it's got to be so sturdy that there's no question in your mind that that pot is not going to fall, that it's stable as can be. So you need a strong crane, you need a solid fulcrum, you need an overweight counterweight to make sure that that system is bomber, that there's no way that that's going to fall. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to say this. When you have water boiling on a fire, this is not a hangout fire. You don't sit down next to it and chill because you need to be available and aware and able to back up fast. If that pot were to fall, if someone were to trip on it, if something were to, to knock it over, you don't want to be caught sitting on the ground where that boiling water can spill into your lap. I'm sure you can imagine what that would create. So always, always, when you have water boiling on a fire, you're either standing next to it or squatting next to it so that you can easily get back out of the splash zone should the pot fail or fall. The other thing that you'll see is that in order to set up a fire crane, your cooking implement needs to have a bale on it. And a bale is just another word for that wire handle, some kind of handle to suspend a pot. The reason I like the crane so much is that it allows me to manage the heat source under my fire. I can really get in here and feed the fire. I can add oxygen to the fire through blowing on it. I can um, turn it into a simmer very easily. I can build the wood up to turn it into a high heat situation. And if I'm trying to boil water quickly, the rule of thumb is you want to use pencil sized sticks and you want to keep those sticks built up to the base of your pot pretty much throughout the process of boiling. That way the sticks have time to ignite, heat up, and uh, transfer that heat to your water in the steel pot above it. So always think about you know having a good source of pencil size sticks on hand. Really I never really go more than a index finger in diameter because this size of diameter of stick you know it catches uh, fire relatively easy and when it does it creates a good bit of heat. If I step up this, this stick into a really big diameter it creates a, a heat block essentially until that stick ignites and we don't want a heat block. We want a constant source of fire underneath our pot. The other thing you'll notice is I built a pretty substantial reflective wall out of stone around my pot. And that reflective wall only boosts the efficiency of this system because all of these stone surfaces here are reflecting the heat of my fire right back into my pot. And that's only going to make this boil so much faster. Uh, the other thing that this reflective wall does in this open area where my hand is here, where, I, where I'm feeding my fire, it creates a draft so that most of the smoke and most of the heat is getting pulled back into the far side of the reflective wall away from your fire crane 
and surrounding the pot even more, adding to the efficiency. So all these things add up to a really nice, uh, safe, fast, efficient way of boiling water. Um, so it, it, this, is, this is the most basic. I do want to introduce one other setup because you might find yourself in a situation where you don't have rocks, and that happens. And if you don't have rocks, you can come into a setup where you're using forked sticks to create a crane. So I went out this morning and just uh, found a couple forked sticks and we're gonna create another crane setup while this is finishing getting a boil um, using forked sticks. So whenever I'm thinking about putting a forked stick into the ground, obviously I have the issue of, well, can I hammer on a forked stick? And if I start hammering on a forked stick, oftentimes I break my fork and that doesn't work very well. In this situation, I probably could hammer down this center prong and direct the energy straight into the earth, but oftentimes I don't have that option. I just have a fork, and if I start hammering in the fork or on one of the prongs, I end up breaking my fork. So often I employ a drill, which is just a second uh, piece of wood. This I found, it's a, a piece of a locust root ball. So I know locust roots have pretty strong grain. I can, they can take a little bit of a punishment. So I took the locust root, I sharpened the stick, I'm gonna use it here with a hammer stone, and I'm gonna drive the drill in, loosening it up, driving it in, loosening it up, driving it in, loosening it up, creating this hole as I'm tapping into the soil here and making it loose enough that I can easily insert my forked stick, and then with a little bit of weight and twisting, drive that forked stick down deep enough that it's solid and it creates a fulcrum that is going to be safe for me to suspend water on. So, fulcrum's in, it's about the right height that I want it at, all right? Now, if I don't have a rock for a counterweight, I'm going to use a second fork stick. And you can see how this can create an anchor for my fulcrum, or for my lever. And, uh, and so, this would be driven in. I don't want to do this without moving my crane first so I can take some measurements. Uh, let me check on our water here. It kind of sounds like we might have a boil. And there we have it, folks. Just in this short time we've been talking, less than 10 minutes, we got a rolling boil. And a rolling boil means clean water to drink. It means there's no viruses in there. There's no uh, microorganisms that can make us sick. No little cysts. So that's boiling water with a fire crane. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna pull that off, and we're gonna readjust adjust the crane over to this Y stick setup so you can see what that looks like. My favorite way to handle hot bales is if I have a a handkerchief or some kind of non-flammable fabric, I'll create a hot pot holder. If not, I can create hot pot holders using forked sticks. A little bit more dangerous because I don't have a hands-on available situation, whereas when I use my hands in a handkerchief, I can feel that bale, I can hold that stick, things get nice and easy, and I can very carefully slide that hot water off, set it in a spot where it can cool down, put in my food that I want to, put it back on the fire to simmer for a while, or let that cool down and turn it into drinking water. So if we'll direct our attention back over to our crane here, here's the Y stick setup. So obviously I'm not quite over the fire, I would move things a little closer, but for this uh, example you'll be able to see exactly what I'm getting at here. And then I'm gonna use this stick as my anchor. All right, so I've sharpened one end of it, I'm just gonna drive it in. I chamfered the other end so that I can drive it nice and easy. And I'm gonna see if I can just put this in to where it'll lock down on the far side of my crane, holding it in place. So now I've created a Y stick fulcrum and an inverted Y anchor. And if I brought my water back, um, again, you know, realize that my crane is not on target right now. It needs to be extended further but for the example of the Y stick and the counter Y, you see how these things work together, and this would be used in places where I don't have rocks or logs to create fulcrums and counterweights. But that could be extended back into my fire box of reflective wall surface, and I could get a boil on just as easily there. So y'all, boiling water, there's lots of techniques. This is just one of them. This is my favorite for backcountry over fire boiling. It's the fastest. I feel like it's the most versatile. I feel like um, it uses all of the elements the way they're supposed to be used. I got nice reflective surfaces. I got plenty of oxygen and working room to deal with my fire. 
I'm not dealing with suffocating fire the whole time. Uh, I can manage the heat levels really well, and I feel like it's really safe. I don't think it's gonna be falling on anyone. I've been using this method for about 20 years, teaching all kinds of groups in the woods, and have, uh, really, I can't think of any instances where if taught properly, where we've had any kind of failings or burns coming off of this situation. So remember the safety aspects I pointed out to you. Uh, don't sit down next to boiling water. Really treat it with a lot of respect because that can create a survival situation in and of itself. Uh, but boiling water is a skill that is life-saving, certainly makes your food taste better. And uh, in first aid applications, sterile water can go a long way as far as treating and, and dealing with wounds. So. Um, Hope you guys picked up something new today. Get out there and practice this. And uh, remember, building fire, setting up cranes, it doesn't uh, always come as easy as it looks on film the first time. It's something that you gotta train. So failure to train, training to fail. You guys gotta get out there and practice it. And uh, you know, I hope you like the cranes as much as I do. Y'all take care, have a good day.